once we have the choice, we see the alternatives, we see the outcomes. So just realize we always have this power of choice. You are now tuned in to the Misi Muse Unplugged, a pop-up podcast variety show helping consultants along their journey to greatness with your host, management consultant, author and blogger, Christy Lindor. my go-getters. Welcome to the Misi Muse Unplugged podcast show. I'm your host, Christy Lindor, and absolutely thrilled to be back online. We took a little bit of a break for a couple of weeks in December, but we're back. Super excited, geared up for the next round of amazing episodes, really providing you tips and best practices to really help you on your journey to greatness. So for today, we're actually kicking off episode 29, and we'll be doing a segment that I call AMA. And if you're new to the show, AMAs are essentially, oh, they're called AMAs, ask me anything, but they're essentially interviews where we get a chance to connect with a seasoned or a former consultant, and they give you advice. Today's guest, we have Jack H.M. Wong. A little bit about Jack, he's actually based in Singapore, He's a former Big Four consultant. He spent most of his career in a Big Four firm, decided to branch out, become an entrepreneur. He's now a speaker. He's an author. He's got a really cool book called Cracking the Entrepreneur Code. You can check that out. And he actually gives some really candid advice. And I think I I really opened up the podcast for the beginning of this year with this episode because kind of where he was at the crossroads in his consulting career and the decisions he made to really kind of branch out on his own, I think really resonates with a lot of go-getters that I've spoken to. So I think you'll enjoy his episodes. Check it out couple of other announcements. Thank you to all my go-getters that took time, gave us feedback. Before we took off for a break, we had actually launched a feedback improvement study, just really getting information from you all, letting me know what you like about the show, what you dislike. I actually got some really, really thoughtful responses. So thank you so much. If you've got some other ideas and tips, feel free to drop us a line, unplugged at gmail.com. Before we went off break as well, I mentioned that I had finished writing my book and super excited to announce and kick off today that the book is actually ready for pre-order. So again, if you go to my website, misinews.com, you'll find a pre-order link. And there you can also download a preview of what we call the Misi Muse Manifesto, which is actually a part of the book. So check those out. And with that, let's get started. I would like to welcome Jack. H.M. Wong to the show. So Jack, thank you for making time to join us today on the Misi News Unplugged. How are you doing? Hi, thanks, Christy. And thank you for inviting me on the show and look forward to having a very fruitful discussion and inspire audiences today. Thank you. Absolutely. 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 So I know we were just kind of getting started, Jack, and uh, Mm -hmm. you mentioned it's 10 o'clock in in your time in in Singapore. How's the weather? Well, Well, Singapore has no four seasons. It's always hot and hotter, and it rains right now, so it's kind of okay. It's cooler than really under the sun. That's Singapore weather. Similar <laughs> to Florida, if I'm not wrong. I'm sure that was really good context for folks. I'm in cold, dreary Boston. <laughs> it's I think it's about like 40 degrees or so. It's still it's still okay. It's not too too bad yet, but we get cold over here. So I would trade places in a second with you for sure, Jack. Okay, sure. <laughs> Well, I guess before we get started with today's interview and discussion, if you can maybe take a moment to introduce yourself to the go-getters of the Misi Muse Unplugged. Okay, so, sure. So my name is Jack and I am actually from Singapore. In case Singapore, somebody is asking where Singapore is, it is the center of Southeast Asia, about 20 to 30 hours flight from Boston. And uh, essentially, I used to work in a big four accounting firm and I spent almost 11 years working there. And basically, at one time, I decided to jump off the plane and start my own consulting firm because enough is enough. There are lots of reasons why, but I'm not going to bore 
your audiences to that. Basically, uh, life has never been the same since I left the corporate world because every single day is an interesting day as an entrepreneur. And the clients that, uh, that I'm having are constantly giving me challenges. And I think we'll talk about some of these challenges later on. And again, it's interesting journey, I must say. So thank you for that, that context. Jack, maybe you can take a moment and just talk a little bit about your business and what made you decide to go into it? I, I was taking a look at your website. You have such an inspiring story. Maybe you can just <laughs> okay. share a little bit more context for us. Okay, so the, basically I work in a big four accounting firm and that was actually my first job. At my time, I, I know it's not something that millennials are very used to. At my time, basically, there's no issue about getting a job. And in fact, I had no, I had five offers from then the big six accounting firms. But having said that, uh, when I joined my first employer, I was promised a couple of things. Number one, if you work hard, if you build your clients on time, collect the money from them, you'll get your annual promotion, annual increment, and in 15 years down the road, you become a partner of the firm. Sounds promising, and I, I was so with that idea. But after working with that firm for about 11 years, just one fine day, maybe of some chemistry, uh, something at two now still do not know why I had a quarrel or argument with one of the partners in the firm. And what happened is that as a result of that quarrels, in the next six months, I actually had been let go of the firm. So that is my, the end of my 11 years lifetime span in the accounting firm. I actually, after this, I moved to a law firm. I mean, a law firm in Singapore, an international law firm in Singapore. And there was actually employees' mindset moving from one job to the other job. Sooner or later, I also realized that life is not, life is totally not balanced because it's good pay. As a lawyer, it's very good pay, but no life. So after working a combined seven years, 17 years, I've decided to leave the corporate world and start my consulting business because that has been what I've been doing in the past. So it's very logical for me to start my consulting. Plus, I have been training, training professionals for a combined 12 years. So my first business actually is consulting and training for my clients and professionals based in Singapore. Wow, that is a, a very interesting story that you, you shared with us. I, I want to go back to, the, you know, when you were in Big Four and then mm. you had that situation that happened and then you ended up leaving. What was going on in your mind at that time? I ask that because sometimes that does happen. Situations like that happens, you know, to, to people all the time. And the mm -hmm. fact that, you, like you said, you had that employee mindset, right? You said, mm -hmm. all right this happened, let me go find another job as, you know, so mm. like, I, it'd be interesting to hear a little bit more about your mindset then. And then how did you go from kind of that employee mindset to the entrepreneur mindset? Okay. Sounds interesting because number one, when I had that quarrels or arguments with the partners at my, in my mind, the question, the first question I asked is that, have I done anything wrong? Mm -hmm. So I questioned myself on that, which is very natural. I have searched within me and I couldn't find anything that I've done wrong so as to attribute to the fact that the, we have a, we have this argument. Having said that, I realized that, well, the partner actually subtly hinted to me that no one is indispensable. So therefore, it means that no matter how much time plus sweat I put into the firm, I can be made very easy to be removed. I mean, just because of a person's opinion. So I've learned the lesson that what I've been told by my parents, by my teachers, the concept of job security and loyalty actually does not exist anymore. And I said, okay, I have to prove to myself that I need to earn my right to survive in the firm. So that is the, re the first lesson, the big lesson I've learned in my first 11 years with the big four, no job security. So I haven't been exposed to any entrepreneur's mindset or, or teaching. So logically in Singapore context, most people would be naturally moving from one job to the other job. So I'm just like follow the big crowd, look for another job. And I was able to find one in the law firm. So in the law firm is a very different context because yes, it's just still same professional firm yet because lawyers work and the accountants work are slightly different. It's more fun, more interesting. I love the job actually very much. Having said that, like I earlier said, it's good pay, 
but it's not really 24. It's not like nine by six job. It's actually 24 by seven. It's not 24 by five. It's 24 by seven. Mm. And I've worked around the US clock because the firm is an American based law firm. So I remember one day, even there's a public holiday in Singapore, I was still working. And wherever I go, let's say for a holiday, my partner will ask me, Jack, are you able to access 3N emails or BlackBerry? During that time, there's no iPhone, so BlackBerry, are you able to be accessed to that? So basically, it's like my partner wants to connect with me wherever I go. So I only worked in this law firm for five, five and a half years, and I said, enough is enough. I want some life balance against the work. And therefore, 17 years combined, I've decided to take a big shift because for me, my, my, in my profession, if I'm not joining, if I decide to leave the law firm, where else can I go? If I'm an employee, employee says, well, I can join another law firm, I can join another accounting firm, but let me just take a chance to leave and work for myself and get out of the rat race. So that is how I started this entrepreneurship journey back in 2011. And I used the term jump out of the plane, not just like leave the corporate world because when I jump out of the plane, my mindset has been said that there's actually no U-turn because of the law of gravity. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that analogy. You know, before I go to my next question, I just have to pause, Jack, and just say how inspiring your story is because I feel like that's the case of a lot of folks, you know, that they may have gone through something similar and they may not have taken the chance on themselves. So mm. I give you a lot of kudos for seeing the writing on the wall, understanding the theme and saying, you know what, there's got to be a better way. And even if it's scary, even if it means jumping out of a plane, scary, yep. that's where I need to go next. I yep. give you a lot of kudos for that. Thank what, you for that. Before I pivot to the next kind of segment of my interview, what advice would you give someone that's kind of going through the same themes? Maybe they're at a crossroads in their, in their career and they're trying to make that decision if they stay, if they go and make the leap. What, you know, if someone listening to this show right now, like, what would you tell them to do? Going back to that time when I have to make that decision, I didn't realize consciously, but now I can actually tell people if you were in my situation, you just realize one thing, you have the power to choose. You have the power of choice. So you can choose what you want to do. Like instead of having the events show up and force you to make your move, you said to yourself, I actually have the power to choose. I can choose to remain as an employee or I can give myself a chance to do something differently. Because once we have the choice, we see the alternatives, we see the outcomes. And that would mean that whatever we decide what our next move is going to be, it is more fulfilling. And chances of being right instead of being wrong would be very high. So just realize we always have this power of choice. Well said, well said. Today's episode is brought to you on behalf of the Misi Muse. A hundred plus selected practices, unwritten rules and habits of great consultants. A book by Christy Lindor. Written in the voice of a mentor, the Misi Muse provides insights on the unwritten rules of great consultants. A perfect read for new or aspiring consultants. Christy dives into her 15 plus years of consulting experience while sharing interviews and anecdotes from over 50 consulting partners and leaders that represents thought leadership from 80% of the top 10 consulting firms in the world. Pre-sale begins shortly. Sign up at www.macymuse.com. So I'm going to pivot. I think this actually is a nice segue to uh, the next topic I wanted to talk to you about, which was kind of the gig economy. Mm. So that's like a trend. It's like a buzzword that I've been hearing for from almost the last year or so. And mm. I realized there's actually a study that um, the uh, Prudential uh, company had done recently that states that now about 16% of mm. um, the U.S. market of individuals are have become part of this gig economy. You know, and, and you and I were talking, I you know, gig economy is kind of a fancy word for micro entrepreneurship. So yeah. Given that, Jack, you know, you've made that leap. What's kind of your definition of the gig economy? How do you see it kind of unfolding in your part of the world? Why is it important for, for consultants to be aware of it? 
Well, again, the concept of having a choice suggests that I can work for a company as a consultant because I have over the 17 years developed a skill set. My skill set is actually based on the tax law that happens in international and I'm able to analyze very complex tax problems for my client by giving them very simple solution. So that is actually my core skills, which I've developed in the corporate world. So if I am a consultant, if I decide to move on and get out of the present job, like I said earlier, I can make a choice. I can use the same skill set and work for another company, remain as an employee. Or why don't I give myself a shot? Like I can utilize this skill set and take into account the fact that I don't need to take the pressure by another employer. I'm now the owner. So basically, I can utilize the skill set to be a consultant, to set up my business, a consulting business to help other clients. So again, it's actually the power of choice that I'm mentioning again and again. So with that, Jack, how can a consultant today prepare to to make that switch? If they're thinking about doing that, what would be like the one or two steps that you would you would recommend that they do given your your journey? Sure. Number one, the mindset is very different because the level of responsibility as a business owner or entrepreneur is very different from an employee. Because if I screw up on something as an employee, I can always fall back on my boss and my boss will take the heat from the client. So I'm not, I don't need to take 100% responsibility as an employee, so to speak. But now if I'm, the, I'm my own boss, then I have to take 100% or sometimes even more than 100% of responsibility to make sure my client's happy because if not, then I won't get paid. So the mindset of taking 100% responsibility is very mission critical. That's number one. And number two, knowing the skill set or having the experience on applying the skill set is very important. But once I jump off the plane and start my own firm, other skills are coming in. And I can't say, wow, because I used to work in a big four accounting firm as a consultant and I'm so skillful. And therefore, when I go out and do start my own firm, I will definitely get people on board or get new clients on board. Unfortunately, the truth is it's not the case because what happened is that I still need to learn other skills. For example, just to just name, just name a few, marketing skill is one. The skill of selling and persuasion and negotiation is the other. And finally, communication is the third. Now that I'm a business owner, I have to make sure that I know what I pitch, how I pitch, how I present, and make sure I'm able to sell. I mean, such skills that are developed as an employee in the past form, in my case, but they are not like developed in the mindset of a business owner. So to me, being a business owner actually requires me to take on further skills in order to be able to survive and thrive in the consulting business. Well said, for sure. So I want to pivot again and and talk a little bit about your your book, Cracking the Entrepreneur Code. I I feel as, you know, as we kind of, if I codify like our conversation so far, you know, you think about the gig economy, you think about ways to how to build for both the employee versus the the business owner mindset. Mm -hmm. I feel like your book really kind of tells that story well. So maybe tell us a little bit about it. Cracking the Entrepreneur Code, if someone asks me what exactly is this book about, because incidentally, there are so many books of similar title. So I will just talk about this book by sharing with people. This is how I started my first three years as an as a, as a entrepreneur. Basically, when I first started this business, when I look back then in 2011, interestingly, I didn't really start with the concrete plan. I just jumped off the plane. And for the first three months, I was sitting in front of my computer, waiting and looking for opportunities. I had three months of no income, so to speak. So basically, what this book is about is how I transcend from that three months with no income and always looking for new clients to the third year. By the end of third year, I was able to achieve a six figures. So what are the key lessons that I've learned? What are the seven principles that I have come up with to summarize my first three years of entrepreneurship experience? Like we always said that it's important to to make sure you make your clients happy. But the fact is that in the world of business, a lot of things I actually do not know. And I have to be humbly say that if I don't, don't know anything, what should I do? Well, I can say, let me figure out 
on my own. Because we are professional, we are high skilled people, we are very proud of us being the best of the best. So if I have that mindset as a business owner, then I will not be able to, to be successful. Because in the world of business, it's always about having a team around you. So I need to stay vulnerable and ask for help and make requests from someone who has done that or who has faced the same challenge that I'm facing right now. And by asking the person just one thing, I can move my business miles away. So therefore, it is a very different ballgame, knowing how to make requests, trust other people, and put myself as a vulnerable position, and take my pride off as a specialist. That is like a very, very different mindset that I must say. And this book gave me this lesson of asking people how I can get good at certain things that I need as a business owner. And what are some other characters as a business owner? I talk about the leadership style that I have. Like how do you develop as a leader so that your raving fans, your, your followers will exist and follow you? Again, this book has provided a chapter on that. How do you do marketing? making sure that you are being seen online, offline. Your story, like Christy, you said, if you have read my web website, you are a bit inspired by what I've said. Well, this is, again, something that I've documented on my book. I really like the point about vulnerability. I think okay. that's sometimes what, what holds people back, Jack. You know, mm. they're, they're, they're kind of, they're scared of putting themselves out there because putting yourself out there is scary. You have to be a little vulnerable in order to make it work. But to your point, it does mm. help you take things to the next level. So I, I really yeah. like that. And in Go Gutters, we're going to put all the links to uh, to Jack's book and information so you can check it out for yourself. Really, really cool. So Jack, any last remarks uh, that you want to share in today's show? The last remark, usually I would say to people who are in my shoes, who, have, who are now, who might be facing my problem right now is never give up. Don't just quit and throw the tower because there will always be the universe makes no mistake of giving us a challenge so see the challenge as an opportunity and ask yourself this question what are the choices that i can make based on the existing challenge stay cool remain high intelligence low emotion you'll be able to see many opportunities around that and that's why this economy right now is so fascinating in my opinion Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jack. This is such a great, it's just great to hear your story and hear your point of view. How can people reach you if they want to get a hold of you? What are some um, some of your websites or, or social media handles? I have a very interesting Facebook fan page, Jack HM Wong Official. I mean, which I posted, which I regularly post stuff there, videos, posts. I don't anyhow post things. Whatever I post there is meaningful, about, is, is, is relevant to businesses or entrepreneurship. My book, Cracking the Entrepreneur Code, I mean, for your listeners, well, you can actually go to crackingentrepreneurcode.com, key in your email address, and you are able to obtain a downloadable version of my book if you like. And finally, jackhm1.com is my website, which I maintain certain blog posts, and also some of the other interesting stuff. So you can always check it out there. Awesome. Awesome. And again, we'll, we'll share those links on our show notes. Thank you so, so much, Doc. This was fantastic. Thank you, Christy. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you, my go-getters, for tuning in today. This is Christy Lindor signing out of the Umisi Muse Unplugged Pop-Up Podcast. Here's to your journey to greatness. Tune in every Friday for new episodes syndicated on iTunes, Google Play Music, and many more. Visit www.misimuse.com for more information.